Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. This week is a little bit different in the fact that we are going to look at charts quite a lot. I also could have called this tutorial Silverwing, an inside rendering episode, because we are going to talk a lot about the inner workings of render engines, specifically about the workings of a unidirectional path tracer like Octane. So, have you ever wondered why it is that a path tracer can deal with all sorts of situations in lighting and is generally pretty fast? But then, when it comes to caustics, it really struggles a lot? Today I want to give you some insights why this is and why it's such a big deal to have this photon tracer that came out from Otoy in the last version of Octane. So let's get started. So basically what I'm talking about with this very simple scene, so we have a light source and a crystal, sort of. And if we're looking at the shadow here, you can see that the light is penetrating through the object and then creating caustics through its refraction. And while the rendering right now seems decently fast, the smaller I make the light source, the more noisy it gets. And it gets worse quite quickly. So if I set the light source to be 5x5, five five, you can see that the noise is taking over hand here and it's really not nice to look at. So why is that? Why is that rendering from the camera to the light source so noisy? To answer that question, let's again jump into some charts. Alright, to see what's going on, let's dissect the real world through the abstraction of a graph here. So what we have here is a camera and a light source and some objects in our scene. Now in reality, the light source emits billions of billions of photons, or if we translate it to CG, light rays every second, and those interact with our objects here. So those billions of photons flying around the scene and some of them will hit the lens and then the sensor of our camera. Of course, what the light rays are doing depends on the surface properties of our object. So if they are diffused, they are going to diffuse in all possible directions. And if they are reflected, then they are either directly reflected or glossy reflected and sort of spread out in different directions around the perfect reflection angle. And the same goes for the refractions. In reality, the photons are generated by light sources and with our camera we are trying to capture them. Now in ZG this process would be a waste of computation because the light source would spread photons in all sorts of directions with all sorts of possible endings. And the few photons that end up in our lens then would make the picture. And we would have to calculate a lot more photons to figure out which couple of photons will end up in our lens. So what people did when they invented CG was to reverse the whole process. So now what's happening is that the rays are shot through the camera, then interact with the objects and then trying to find the light source. And this is much more efficient because the light rays are only shot in our viewing direction. That means it is much more likely that everything that we view will be sampled in a way that is efficient enough for us to then have a noise-free rendering. And also, dependent on the surfaces, the rays form different characteristics. So if the ray, for example, hits a diffuse surface, it will spread throughout all directions possible for the ray, meaning a 180 degree dome. As past tracers usually don't distinguish between direct and indirect rays, meaning that the indirect rays are generated from the beginning of the rendering process, that means that rays are multiplied when they hit a diffuse surface. 
Now, the disadvantage here is that Ray's shot in every direction is a hit and miss situation to find the light source. Therefore, there is a mechanism implemented in almost all render engines, including of course Octane, that will shoot a direct ray to the light source, because the render knows mathematically where the light source is. And this mechanism is known either as next event estimation or more popular, importance sampling. You might have heard of that. It works a little bit differently for HDRIs, so in HDRIs, very bright parts of the HDRI are then selected and then rays shot against those brighter parts. And this is how the important sampling is done for HDRIs. Okay, but now back to our caustics. Let's go through the real world application here again. So what happens when we have caustics in the real world is the light emits some photons. They go through a glass body then they're going to be refracted inside of the glass body. They hit a diffused surface and then the photons spread in all possible directions. One of them hits the lens of our camera and therefore the sensor. So we can see it. Let's see what happens in CG. So in CG we shoot a ray into the scene and on a diffuse surface. So we have the next event estimation or the important sampling shooting a ray directly to the light source. This is all fine and good, but if the ray is intersected by a refractive object, what happens is that the ray then is diverted from its original direction and refracted as it should be. So it no longer is on the trajectory to hit the light source and misses it. And therefore we don't get a fancy caustic here because there's no light path established between the camera and the light source. Let's give you another example here. So this would be the right position for getting a caustic because now the refraction angle is aligned in the right way to hit the light source. But this is not the angle the important sampling shoots the ray in. The important sampling shoots the ray directly to the light. And this one will miss the light because it will be refracted here also. So the mechanism that gives us very nice clean and fast renders utterly fails when it comes to caustics. Because it cannot predict the complex way that the light is refracted inside of objects and then hit the light source predictably. There have been many attempts to get formulas or algorithms that can do that, but none of them are really as fast as just rendering something with path tracing and without caustics. Let me just add another quick insight here. So if you turn on fake shadows in Octane, What's happening is that the refraction will be turned off for indirect rays, meaning rays that come from a diffuse surface. So if you turn on fake shadows, the rays that come from a diffuse surface, meaning coming from a camera, then go to diffuse surface and then hit the object that is refractive, the rays will no longer be refracted, but just let through to the light source, thus disabling caustics and enabling a much faster rendering. There's one little trick that also happens, and that is when the ray here is hitting the material, the energy that goes away through the reflection from the Fresnel is evaluated, and therefore you get a slight shadowing on the floor here. And this in most cases, or at least if you have a very soft lighting situation, is enough to make the viewer feel that he's looking at a realistic scenery. As a last slide, let's have a look at the new photon caustics from the photon tracer in Octane. So what the photon tracer is doing, it combines the directions from both the past tracing and the real world in one engine. So both the camera and the light are sending out rays. From the light, they are called photons. From the camera, they are called rays. And when a photon ray hits a diffuse object, it will stay there. And when a camera ray targets that area here, 
it will see the photon ray and then they can be connected. And this is also why the photon rays have a radius to them, because that radius is the area in which the camera ray will pick up on a photon. Of course, this method is also not completely perfect, because sending a lot of photons into the scene also has an overhead on compute. So we just get a higher render time than what we had with just path tracing. So in 3D I have my keycaps again, because they're really versatile to show you things. And let's go outside of the camera, so it's also a very simple scene with a light source here and just those keycaps. And we don't have a HRI for now. And as the renderer goes along, you can see that it's incredibly hard for the renderer to get some nice caustics here. So let's real quick go to the glass material, go to the common tab here and select fake shadows. And you can see what's happening now is exactly what we said before. The light rays are not longer bent or refracted, but we get straight important sampling from there. And as I said also, the smaller the light source is, the more fake that method looks. So you can see that looks incredibly fake. So let's turn off fake shadows right now. There are some methods to um, get a little bit of a better representation of the caustics by going to the caustic blur here and blurring the object more. You can see that it helps to decrease the noise and increase the performance of the engine. So what this is doing is it basically gets to the roughness of the glass material and adds a roughness for those rays that are shot against the light. Let's go back to the chart one more time real quick. So by making those intersection points a little bit blurry, you get some variation in which direction the ray can go. And therefore the chances to still hit the light are higher and therefore you get a better performance. But with the sacrifice of accuracy. So looking at the scene, let's get the caustic blur to a really high number, for example 0.5. You can see it clears up quite fast, but the complete details of the caustics are gone. And this is because the object for the caustics looks like as the blur would be 0.5. So let's simulate that with our shader. If we go to the roughness and set it to 0.5 here. So you get the same effect here for the caustics as we had with the caustic blur 0.5 here. And this is because it exactly looked that way for the caustics before. It was separated between this look for the caustics and the clear look for our camera rays. So last but not least, let's look at the photon tracing once more. Here we go. And you can see that despite our scene is very difficult to render for our caustics, now that the separation between the photons that going to be shot from the light source and the camera rays or the samples that come from the camera is a lot more performant. Let me also show you the photon gathering radius here. And this is the radius where within that radius the photons will be merged with the camera rays. So if we have that radius a little bit bigger, so let's make it 0.001, you can see those photons are really blobby. And this is because their radius is really big, so a lot of camera rays will see the same photon and then merge it together, so they become blobby. And if you make that really small, you sort of have the same look as a grainy render, because only a couple of those camera rays will see the photons. And a lot of camera rays in between the photons will not see any other photons, because they are too small and not connected, therefore. So the way to get the perfect result here 
is to make the photon gathering radius large enough so it doesn't look noisy and small enough so it doesn't look blobby. Like something like this. Last but not least, what would hit even more with unidirectional path tracing would be a dispersion, so splitting the colors. So if we do that with our photon tracing, the result is a lot faster, even more so than with the normal caustic approach. So let's do this and make it a little bit higher than it would be in reality, so we can see some results here. And you can see there is this fine grain here now that is sort of colorful. And this is because now our caustics are separated into the different wavelengths and therefore refracted slightly differently. And that again concludes this week's quick tip. I hope you learned something and found the format of this week's quite interesting. As always, if you have any suggestions for further tutorials, write them down in the comments below. Other than that, I say have a nice time and happy tracing. Bye.